Hey, what is going on everybody? Physio Trader here and it is the first trading day of the new year. It is uh, Tuesday, the 3rd of January in 2023. We are going to set up a watch list for uh, the coming week. Looking at probably going to be doing setting up watch list, you know, two to three times per week. Not every day like I was doing previously, just getting way too busy with so many other things. But so I'm going to space them out a little bit, making more uh, time length as far as more of kind of like a swing trade profile. Um, and because the market has really just kind of softened up, it looks like we're in just a solid downtrend and uh, just going to see how we can still take advantage of the market on both the way down and on the way up. So let's dive in. So over here, we do have uh, Charles Schwab, Street Smart Edge. Uh, the market is closed, it just closed. I actually just got back from seeing some patients and gonna go hit up the gym, um, hopefully before some of the after work crowd shows up. So over here, we've got scanners on the left, these six charts there are linked. We've got Tesla up first. Um, and I know I, I typically start with the S&P 500. We'll go to the SPY after this one. This one was just already up. But we've got over here, if you're new to the channel, this is the two minute, the 15 minute, the 30 minute, uh, the 60 minute, our hourly chart, the daily and the weekly. Um, and so, um, as you can see here, just basing, I mean, we broke through the 200 period average. Let's make this one a little bit bigger. We broke through the 200 period average in the last two weeks. It's just been like a slaughter fest. We had a, a big buying that did occur um, at the end of the week, the last two days. And you can see the volume is, uh, is, is keeping track pretty, pretty well. Um, However, we basically gave it all right back there. So, uh, and today we did hit a, a brand new low of 104. Uh, I think it was like 104.50. Uh, 104.64 was the low. I stand corrected. Uh, a little bit of a bounce, and then we're kind of retracing here. Uh, if you take a look over here, I mean, the daily chart's just down trending, but you take a look over here again, momentum is allowing this thing to push down a little bit lower. But if you look at this kind of, uh, I don't want to say it's a support zone, but there is a little bit of buying demand because we are getting a support zone around that 106 to 108 area. Um, what one of two things is going to happen tomorrow, we are going to flash through 100. Um, you know, this is like the fifth day in a row, we're like a 10 to 15% drop, we're going to flash through um, through the 100s and then things are going to get really, really ugly very, very quickly. Um, and I think that that is the more likely uh, place to be or we are going to have a little bit of a bounce. Um, I actually think the price target on this thing is, is uh, I, I think we're getting a little oversold on this one and that's the challenge. Uh, today, I'll be honest, um, so with Tesla, what happened is the, the only thing that I could speculate is that one, a lot of people are going to probably start jumping into this to short. Two, is that um, they did release quarter four numbers over the weekend and they had missed on expectations. I don't find that much of a surprise personally. Tesla's always missing expectations. They always shoot for the moon and they always under deliver. They over promise and under deliver. But um, as an investor myself, I'm not really all of that concerned because the numbers are still growing. I mean, it is astronomical 10 years later how Tesla is still growing, you know, 10 plus percentage points, you know, month over month, year over year. So um, to me, the fact that they're missing their mile shot, but they're still making their their actual quotas. Uh, I still think that this company is being um, undervalued and I think that there's a lot of momentum to the downtrend. I think a lot of people that lost money shorting it prior to the pandemic or during the pandemic are mad, they're ruthless, they want their blood. Um, and so I, I think they're shorting, I think there are a lot of people unloading. Um, there could be more to that than what meets the eye, but I do think that this thing is, um, I think it's getting on the oversold territory, so I don't wanna short it, I don't wanna buy it long because the chart's still showing me that this thing is going lower and lower. Um, if we break through 80, or I'm sorry, if we break through 100, I think we're actually gonna get to 80 pretty quick. 80, however, I do think there's gonna be a, a lot of people buying in, and uh, myself included. Uh, it's just gonna be one of those numbers that just, uh, based on other areas that I've looked at before, um, so I don't wanna touch into those today, but essentially, um, my short-term price target is 164 uh, on Tesla. Uh, 164 is, uh, you know, again, it's far away. Uh, I do think that we're going to have a little bit of a trouble getting up to this pink line or this purple line, the daily moving average. Um, but I do think that we are going to retest this downtrending uh, line here around that 144. Uh, this was the area of support. We broke through it. Uh, we've never broke through it with such uh, veracity and tenacity that we did before. But I do like this support line, this 180. Uh, I think that around the 164 is going to be 
you know, in this area is going to be the sweet spot that Tesla is actually going to retest to. So a little bit higher volume today. Today is the start of the year. Um, uh, I don't know. I, I don't really have much value to add to that other than um, from a technical and fundamental standpoint. Uh, from a fundamental standpoint, I think it's oversold, but uh, that is, of course, my belief. And I think a lot of people are, are under underselling or dismissing the fact that Tesla has um, that Tesla does have a lot of benefit with, you know, yes, their cars are getting cheaper and cheaper because of that. But one thing that I think a lot of people are underselling, and I was looking into that, is that Tesla has a massive opportunity where when they offer a uh, full self-driving FSD, that's like a $15,000 tech upgrade. And so whenever that is released, um, you know, they, they could sit there and say, hey, full self-driving, who wants it? 15 grand. And boom, I mean, that stock is going to blow up to the upside uh, very, very, very nicely. I am not convinced that this is, um, I am not convinced at all that this is the end on, on this. And so here we go. So, we are going to switch to the four hour chart right here. So, there's no way on Schwab to actually switch to the four hour. So, if you saw over there, I put on custom minute and then 60 minutes. Um, and so, I just put it at, um, I, I just put it at 240. And so, as you can see here, I mean, we are clearly in this ostrosity of a downtrend, just boom, 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 boom. Um, I do think that there is going to be a little bit of a bounce coming. The problem is, is that where 115 was at a hard spot, we gapped above it. We stayed above it for two days, and today we just slaughtered through it. So that support line, um, it, it, it was a strong resistance line, a pathetic support line. <clears throat> Even if this thing does want to reverse, I don't think, I, I think the next technical um, CPI data comes out on the 12th. That may get things reversing if we have a massive miss to the downside. But again, from this chart, there is nothing on this chart that indicates that anything positive is about to occur. Um, tons and tons and tons of uh, nasty, nasty raw data. As you can see, volume here is increasing precipitously. However, the one thing I would you know denote to that is that the volume is increasing, but the price is decreasing uh, rather significantly. I mean, even, oh wow, a month ago, in one month, it's lost 50%. I mean, it was, what, 199 So in one month, 50% of its market cap is gone. So that, that's a 50% decline right there. Um, and so the likelihood that this thing is going to take a month and do a V-shaped recovery is incredibly unlikely. And so, I mean, just to, to look at that, though, however, and then, I mean, look from here, 318 was in three months ago, a quarter ago. We lost 200 out of 300, you know, 67%. I mean, the thing is down uh, really, really horrendously. So um, I just think that there's a lot of onslaught that's going on unless there's something further happening. But right now, I think Tesla, it's it's one of those that if you want to trade it, you want to scalp it, go for it. Um, sub... 80, what I'm really going to be interested in, I want to be very transparent on this, what I'm really, really going to be interested in is I want to see this thing break through 100. I think we're going to break through 100, and I think we're going to do it this week. Uh, if I'm wrong and this thing starts creeping into the 120s and beyond to the upside, then like today was just, you know, a market upset day. Uh, I don't think that's the case. But if that's the case, then, you know, I missed my opportunity. I want to see this thing break through the 100s. I think it will tomorrow. I could be wrong, but I think it will tomorrow. Uh, I want to say this thing blast through. I think we're going to go through the 90s a lot quicker than most people think. I think volatility is going to increase, but we start creeping into the $80 range. Uh, I'm going to start looking for, you know, long dated um, calls, long dated, not like leaps or anything, probably like two or three months out, uh, looking at just $100. I think that we will easily back test into the hundreds, but uh, we'll see because the volatility, of course, as it keeps dropping, the momentum is going to go and it is going to be a very, 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 very volatile ride. But uh, with all of that being said, let's uh, let's move off Tesla. Uh, but again, that is something that I think a lot of people's eyes are on. Overall, SPY right here, we are trending down into this based on the, the weekly here. Uh, we've got the lower band right here at the 200 uh, simple moving average. A little bit of a sell-off as we start off the first trading day of the new year. Started off hot the first 10 minutes, and after that, it was basically sell, sell, sell. Um, you know, we're shortening things out, but basically the 280 to 285 range is really being a difficult area to break. I think at this point, we are getting a little bit of higher lows in the most part, but we are consolidating once again at that 275. Um, 
I'm still a little biased. I, I, I think the market still has a lot more room to fall, um, but I think it's going to go up first. I think that there's going to be a reprieve. People are going to start to think that this is the turnaround point and it is going to fall. One of the things that uh, I did notice is finally Apple is making a break towards the downside, and I don't think we're going to get any bit of reprieve until this gets down into the 115s, 120 area. So I like this, but remember this line is going to keep going every week and we do have some lower wicks that are just crushing up this. So this 116 to 122 mark is I think going to be our support zone. Uh, that of course does not mean that it is going to be the support zone. We did break out of it. I was wanting to get a little bit higher before we broke. Um, I Again, I still think things have a lot further way to fall and um, I'm not classifying any of this as a buying opportunity uh, just yet. I do think that when the turnaround does occur, it is going to be a violent shakeup to the upside. Uh, it's going to be a relative, you know, eight to ten percent up day, and that up day is going to be further exacerbated by a bond of short covering. People are short; they're going to cover to close, and that's going to be more buyers on top of other people buying who are going to FOMO that buy, and then it is just going to go up and up and up and up and up. Now, I'm not saying that we're going to return to all-time highs or anything like that, but I do think that a lot of that short covering is going to uh, add to that downward move. Over here, um, NVIDIA, we are coming right into that 200 period average on the weekly, um, and I basically called that one. I think that we are going to actually go a little bit lower, and then I think this one's going to break lower even more. Um, as Tesla breaks through 100, I think it's going to drag a lot of things with it. Very, very sad today looking over here on the 30-minute. Um, I was actually looking at a couple things. I was too late to it, but I did short... I shorted NVIDIA at 140, I think I shorted at 148.62, 400 shares, and I, I scalped it. It was intended to be a scalp because based on, again, this is all hindsight, so this makes me look stupid, but this thing gapped up, it was moving really, really strong to the upside, and I was scalping it um basically to that uh i think i was looking for just a retest on that pre-market level this is not based on the 30 minute it was the five but very similar preface um i covered 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 and then um i got stopped out by about 20 cents and then from there it never as you can see it never ever 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 came even close i mean if i was just it's just bad timing um so that was unfortunate because you know uh, I was really hoping to kind of keep it in and go for a little bit bigger of a move. I did not expect that move to happen. So I did miss out on that. That is annoying. This thing looks like we are riding back up again tomorrow. Looks like we're going to be shorting down into this. I would say my price target tomorrow is going to be around 138. And what do you know? 138 is that shorter term bottom. Remember, this thing did go as low as 108 just about a month ago. So uh, 1013, it's low as 108. That is about the same time that Tesla was at 320. So... Um, yeah, I definitely think that it's, you know, uh, I think that we're having a, a big, big, big return to the downside on this one. TQ's got slammed today down, uh, some percentage Tesla, of course, all eyes are on Tesla, 230 million shares traded. I think on a weekly basis, they're about to hit a billion shares traded, uh, just because of how quick I actually probably starting next week when there's five trading days, probably is going to easily hit a billion shares traded. Amazon getting stuck at the $80 mark between 82 and 86. Um, looks like we're getting a little bit of a strength resemblance again. Um, you know, a lot of these companies, they've got their slaughter fest a long time ago. You know, Meta, Apple, not Apple, but Meta, Amazon, NVIDIA, all of these got slaughtered before Tesla was for the most part protected. So I think that's why that's getting the worst of it now. We do have on the weekly over here, we do have some uh, upper mayor and uh, resistance to break through the 87, 88. 89 mark the 90 of course but you can see here nice um, I'm not really trade this way but this looks like a nice cup and handle basically here's the cup here's the handle uh, and typically I would expect some continuation tomorrow that of course uh, resembles can we break through to the upside and then at that point uh, you know I, I do think that we're going to get a little bit more upside movement from there um, but we'll see meta massive massive uh bullish move on the open i wanted to short it actually i wanted to short at 126.20 uh turns out it would have been about as perfect as you can get i think the high was 37 126.37 that is um but of course that's all hindsight i don't really short uh tesla tesla or i'm sorry meta meta moves the way you want it to it's just slow it's not a good scalper sticker or ticker for me it's not a good uh, scalper stock scalper ticker for me it's much more of a swing trade or like using 
um, options to do like a, a swing trade or a couple days swing trade. It still makes the moves you expect it to. It's like Netflix. It's just slow. Uh, so, you know, take that information for what you will. Uh, but over here on the weekly, I do like this uh, coming up. I think that we are actually going to come and get a break towards that 136. I think a lot of people are going to be watching that 136, not just for that 50% Fibonacci retracement. Look at all of these upper wicks over here. And then I think if we can get up there in the next uh, week or two, then we're going to have a nice... Um, risk first reward short opportunity that is going to be going there too so uh definitely something that is of interest to me so keeping this one short and sweet like i said i want to look at this uh basically um i would consider the next couple of days to me it's going to be like a, a scalpers trade uh if you're already in um positions if you're in tesla uh and you're already short uh, I would say either add to the trade. If it breaks through 104 again to the downside, I would add to the trade, look for that 100, but basically stop, keep your stop pretty close to 101 because that 100 is going to be a difficult area to break. Uh, if you want to keep holding, hold for the bigger move, bigger risk, bigger reward. Um, I would not enter on a short position on Tesla right now. I think it is way too overextended. Uh, let the thing consolidate out a little bit. If, uh, if you want to wait to go long, then wait to go long. Let it break 100 first, then go long. Everything else we kind of look through. Uh, NVIDIA, you can look towards shorting pretty much right away. It looks like there's good risk versus reward on the short side. Meta, wait a little bit, let it get a little bit higher, then short. Um, if you are short, if you like to go short or if you like to go long puts, another option for those who either don't have a margin count or don't like to short. Uh, I've actually found out I like doing puts more often than shorting. Um, unless it is a scalp. If it's a scalp, you get more money and I find it better to do that. But as far as the swing trade, I like the, the risk preservation with the put contracts versus shorting the shift. But that is my personal preference. If you have any questions, reach out. Hopefully this is valuable to you. Uh, if you like this format, uh, like I said, I'm gonna try to do it around three times a week, but thank you so, so much. I hope everybody has a wonderful day and I'll catch you all next time.